then there was one king who was arriving on his palanquin, and something happened to one of his palanquin carriers. So he uh, sent out his men to get another palanquin carrier, somebody young, strong, and stout, and they found Jadabharat, thinking he was the perfect person. So Jadabharat was the perfect person, as we'll find out soon. He began to carry the palanquin. He didn't mind whatever job he was given, thinking it was due to his fast fruit activities. So as he was walking and carrying the palanquin, he was uh, seeing that there were some insects on the floor. So pure devotees don't like to kill even insects. So he was tiptoeing around them and jumping here and there. And so the palanquin became very unsteady. And the king was blaming his regular people, but they said, no, it's that new one. So the king, very proud and puffed up, he started chastising Mark Judge Bart, very sarcastically. Oh, I see that you have nobody to help you. And you're so weak and so skinny. Isn't it too bad working so hard? And that's why you can't do such a good job. But Judge Bart, he was transcendental and aloof. He didn't care for happiness, distress, honor, dishonor, even cold. He wasn't at all disturbed. So he kept walking and he kept trying to avoid the ants. So now the king was even more furious, King Rukuna. And he started chastising them. How dare you? I'm the master, you're the servant. How dare you not properly take my chariot, my palanquin, and walk with it properly? I'll have you punished. So speaking in this very harsh way, finally, Jagabharat responded. And he responded very peacefully, not at all touched by the harsh words, but the pure devotee, he always likes to work for the welfare of others, even those who are trying to hurt him. He wants to do welfare to them. So he told King Ramugana that yes, actually you're right. I'm not very strong and stout, but then again, I'm not skinny either. I'm not this body. And it's true, I haven't been working very hard, because only the body is working. As the soul, I do nothing in this world. Now you say that you're the master, and I'm the servant, but that's very temporary, due to your karma. And in your next life, you may be the servant, and I may be the master, and I may order you what to do. In fact, if you were the master, then you can tell me what to do when I listen. But I'm not listening, I can't follow. So how are you the master? By hearing the transcendental instructions from Janabharat, the king, who was anyway on his way to um, the ashram of Kapilade, so he was actually pious and looking for spiritual enlightenment, and that's why the Lord arranged that he meet with Jadvaras. He was so affected that he got down from his palanquin and offered his obeisances to uh, Jadvaras. And he said, who are you? Are you a demigod? Or are you a sub-demigod? Are you a great Rishi? Who are you? And these instructions that you've given me, I can appreciate that it came from a transcendental, very elevated person. So I feel so bad that I offended you. Please forgive me. But then again, I'm not exactly convinced in your arguments. Because you say that the soul is not affected by anything material. But I'm thinking that it is. One's fruitive activities lead to various pains and pleasures are felt by the mind and also felt by the soul. So how can you say that the soul is blue? If rice and milk is cooked in a pot, and the pot has boiling water in it, the rice and the milk will also be cooked as the pot of boiling water boils. So by our fruitive activities, we suffer pain and we enjoy pleasure, and that's felt by the intelligence, the mind, and the soul as well. But I know that there's some defect in my understanding because I can see that you're a great sage.
Can you please clarify this for me? So very beautifully, Judge Mara began to tell him that actually the soul is never affected by any material circumstances. But the mind, when we are, when the soul, the conditioned soul is attached to the mind, the mind dictates that now you're suffering, now you're enjoying, now you're the master, now you're the servant. Whereas actually, the only master is the three modes of nature. We're neither servant or master. So really the soul is not affected, but only by attachment to the mental conception that it think, now I'm taking birth, now I'm dying. So then Mark Maharaj told him about the forest of material enjoyment, which is symbolic of the conditioned soul wandering through the various universes. And he told him that ultimately, the only way to get free from this cycle of repeated birth and death and different color situations is to smear one's body with the dust from the lotus feet of the pure devotee. So at that time, Peter Mukunda surrendered to Jan Bharat and he also became a pure devotee. Go bring him in the name of Good way. 
Lord, we did the hero of the Oscar. Therefore, just like bamboo grass is not destroyed by fire, but it again sprouts, in the same way, only pure devotion is capable of completely removing the seed of desire itself. Ignorance is there. Unless you remove the cause of ignorance, then ignorance must again manifest in someone's activities. So just like when the sun rises in the early morning, the sun has not completely arisen, only just beginning to arise. At that time, all darkness and fear of ghosts and criminals is immediately removed. So even when the shadow of devotion enters the heart of a person, all ignorance is removed. So to explain the glories, or just think of the glories of pure devotion. So we don't just want to describe the glories of even Bhakti Abbas, the shadow of devotion, by describing the history of the Brahman, Ajahnil. So we don't just want to describe Ajahnil was a very, very pious Brahman. He appeared in a high class family. He was always engaged in serving his mother and father, worshipping the household debtors. He was always engaged in performing yagya and pious activities. Ajahnil was very well behaved, in control of his mind and senses, a good example of smart Brahman. So, see, Ajahnil, one day he went to the forest. And in the forest, what did he see? One low class Sulu woman. She was a prostitute, actually. She was embracing a low class Sutra. Both of them were intoxicated, and that prostitute's cloth was falling off. Ajahnil, he tried to run the hook, but couldn't check himself. Last is so powerful. So he went home and he tried to remember the instructions of the scriptures that every woman should be seen as mother or daughter, but he could not because last is so powerful. In Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna asked the question, O Sri Krishna, why is one forced to act even against his will? And Krishna said, Arjuna, it is last only which is the eternal enemy of the soul, and covers knowledge of the soul like dust, like strong covers a fire, dust covers a mirror, or the moon covers an embryo. So lust is a very powerful thing. So by the force of lust, Ajahn failed to control his mind. He failed to control his senses. And again and again, he remembered that prostitute. So what did he do? He called the prostitute to his house as a personal assistant, cleaning ladies, something like that. And he began his activity, his relationship with that prostitute. So he kicked out his wife from the home. He drove his elderly mother and father out of the house and began living a completely unregulated life. What is the difference between a human being and an animal? Only a human being has the power to control the mind and senses and engage in much of them. So one who does not control their mind and senses and lives an unregulated life, in the next life they will become an animal. That means enjoying your freedom, so-called freedom. So as you know, he engaged in unlimited sinful activity. To maintain the prostitute, he had to commit sinful activities like robbery, robbing, murdering, gambling. He took intoxication, even he took beating. He completely gave up all the principles of Vedic culture, Brahminical culture. Even he was so lusty, he was producing one child after another in the womb of that prostitute. But by good fortune, the tenth child, while he was in the womb, then he got some advice to give the name of this child, the name Narayan. These days, people call their children Pinky, Winky, Sticky, Pinky. No relation with any name of Bhagavan. So in Vedic culture, the name of Bhagavan is given to the children. So you'll hear why. So Bhagavan has arranged even, even small cats, dogs, mouse, rabbits, deers, cows, even humans to some degree. And when they're small, they're very, very beautiful and attractive. <laughs> Therefore, nature of the he was always calling his young son. Oh, Narayan, come here. Narayan, eat. Narayan, bad boy Narayan, don't do that again. Narayan, pay attention. He was always calling Narayan, 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 Narayan. So Gurudev said this was like the southern of Ajahnil, Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. So Ajahnil forgot about death, but death did not forget about Ajahnil. And 
exact moment. It's at the time of death. All of us have been given a certain amount of rest. Therefore, activities like jogging and this are not very good because your lifespan goes away very quickly. So as you know, he could, he could not move from the bed. His voice became choked up. Then the younger judges came for him. Those younger judges were very, very fierce in appearance. Actually, in the Puranas, it describes those persons who were very pious. Yamaraj comes for them, but Yamaraj is very beautiful and handsome, and he welcomes you with so much respect. But a person who is very sinful, then why a great personality like Yamaraj will come for them now? And then he sends the Yamarajas. So these are true stories, but you don't think them to be imagination. I heard one story, there was one devotee distributing Maga, his power town near the airport. So he was talking to one guy who was in the suit and tie, he was describing about the fifth canter. And the guy was like, uh, like, not taking it seriously. Then the devotee turned to the photograph of the Yamaguda snatching the soul from the body of Ajahn. So when that man saw that photo, he became so fearful, he passed all of his hands and fell on the ground in the middle of the airport. Then the devotee was amazed at what happened. And he said, a few years ago I had a car accident. And I had a near death experience. So, first I was going to the light, Jesus was there, my family members were there. Most people come back from that, but that man said I went one stage further, and three persons came for me. And that was exactly what they were like. So, these are not the stories, these are the real stories, not the tragedy. So, it began. So these are real issues. So the young people just came for him, and they were very fierce. One had a hook, one had a hammer, and one had a rope. Because the conditioned soul is attached to this, the conditioned soul is attached to this bag of school by body, mind, and words. So the young people with a hammer, he breaks the attack, that attachment. Then he puts the hook into the soul body, and the other young people with the rope, he pulls the soul, covered by the mind and five senses, out of the body and takes the yellow road for his human judgment according to his pious and sinful activities. He is punished in hell and given another animal species as a word for them. So Adam became full of fear. Because what's the greatest fear? That is death. So Adam he was thinking, what am I going to do? Who's going to save me? Then he turned and saw his young child. Oh, no! Actually, he called the name of one one but thinking of his son. The Shiva Bhakti Kumar Purima said, it must have been when he called, Narayan save me. Then he thought, what can this small, what can this small boy do? Then he remembered Lord Narayan, otherwise the other Vishnu members could have become no. It's very small boy. So he called, Narayan save me, at the time of death, with tears in his eyes, and one point of attention, he called out the name of, Narayan! Four syllables. Those four syllables took the form of the four eternal associates of Lord Narayan. They're called the Vishnu Gurtas. Even though Gurudev sometimes may appear angry like a Guru, we should always remember he was always Vishnu, the eternal associates of the Lord. Therefore, those four came from him. And when the young were trying to snatch the soul from the body of Adam, they said, Mahamaya, Mahamaya, don't be afraid. Then they stopped the young Buddhas from taking the soul of Ajahnu, and Ajahnu came back in his body. Ajahnu was not dead. Then came an amazing discussion between the believers in Bhakti, the Bhakti Vedantas on this side, and on the other side, the followers of Karma Kanda. And those who believe that Karma is everything, and the devotees who believe that Bhagavad Bhakti is everything. Adam Guruji, he writes by them. This is a discussion between the devotees and the followers and believers in Karma Kanda. So, the young Buddha, the Vishnu Buddha asked him, Oh, the followers of Kamaraj, you know all religious principles. Then please tell us, why are you taking the soul of this sinless man and taking him for punishment? Please tell us, who should be punished and who should not be punished? Then the young Buddha also said, We also know the principles of religion. Bhagavan Narayan has spoken the Vedic principle that is called Veda, and we have learned from the Amaraj, our spiritual master, those who follow the path of pious activities are rewarded, and those who follow the path of sinful activities and who perform no more form of penance, they are punished by Yamaraj at the time of death. Ajahn 
gave up the order for spiritual master, he gave up the service of his mother and father, he gave up the association of his probably medically married wife, he engaged in intoxication, illicit sex, gambling, he did everything. He was the people like pinup boy of civil rights everything. Therefore, he has not performed any class activities where are taking him to hell. And the other the other Christian would have smiled. How very funny it is. In a religious assembly, in the name of religion, you are performing a religious act. Ajahn Hill by chanting the name of Lord Narayan once. He has atoned for more sinful activities than it's possible to commit. Therefore, the name of Lord Narayan has such power. Therefore, Ajahn Hill, he was not dead. He was listening to this conversation as the Vishnu Dudas described the glories of the name of Narayan. The holy name of Lord Narayan is the best and most powerful process of atonement. One who cheats, one who disobeys the spiritual master, one who has sex with the wife of the guru, one who kills cows, robs burglars, who takes intoxication, who steals gold, who lies and cheats. Even the most simple man can be purified by the chanting of the holy name. Therefore, the other Buddhists gave a very wonderful glorification of the name of Lord Narayan, and Ajahnul was not dead. He was hearing this Hari Kata, this devout Kata spoken by the pure devotees. Satam Prasannam Tamamiri Samut Bhanti Rikana Rasayana Kata. And he also had asked for Allah to be in his Shraddha Radhi Bhanti Anubhari Siddhi. If we hear Hari Kata, what will happen? If we're really hearing, faith must come. Ajahnul is hearing. By chanting the name of Narayan by accident, I became free from birth and death. Imagine what would happen if I chanted the holy name with devotion. Then Ajahnul, he wanted to touch the feet of the Vishnu Judas, but he did not have enough piety, no Sukhvati Sukriti, therefore he disappeared. Ajahnul immediately woke up, and what did he do? He left everything there and went to the Himalaya. And thinking those four Vishnu Judas to be his initiating spiritual master, he constantly engaged in chanting the name of Narayan with devotion. Then at the time of death, because Ajahnul had achieved pure bhakti, the four Vishnu Judas came. He saved spiritual masters, you know? They took, they took Ajahnul on the Vaikuta Viman and took him back to the head. So Guru Maharaj says, Ajahnul got such a result by chanting the holy name by accident. Sankhetyam Parihasya Vlas Gopam Yalaya Yavacham Vaikuta Nama Nahani Asesha Asesha Agaramu Asesha Agaramu Ajahnul can chant the holy name There are four ways to chant the holy name by accident That is called Nama Vlas There are three stages of chanting The pure chanting Everyone chant Hare Krishna did you see Radha Krishna? If you saw Radha Krishna, that means you were chanting the pure name. If you didn't see them, if you didn't see Radha Krishna, but you achieved liberation, that means you were chanting Namavas. And if you didn't get any of those two, then you were chanting the holy name with offense, that is Namavas. Ajahnil, when he chanted the holy name, he did not desire liberation, he did not desire material enjoyment, therefore he could chant in the middle state of chanting, that is called Namavas. Therefore, I wish we could chant the holy name for millions of lifetimes, but if we chant it with Amara, we cannot get any result. So from Ajahnul, we can learn we should not chant with any Amara. Ajahnul was very, very sinful, but he never made any offense to any Vaishnav. Why? Because no Vaishnav went to him. Ajahnul is more fortunate than us because we are in association with Vaishnavas and we are committing so much offense to each other from the spiritual master to the How did fallen deep to 
Ben Bilmiyorum. Biz her Aptal değil. Nadeş kutlu sahibi. Hiç derin nasıl? Hem ki her ağır So he has invested all the power, all the mercy, all his qualities in the games, especially Hare Krishna Hare. Otherwise, Narayan Krishna Ramadha Prabhas Prometheus. So, when <coughs> Ajami does not Ajami, Ajami, when we heard this all dialogue between Jamarat and Narayan, It was first Nama At that time, he wanted to touch the feet of all Narayan Guru. But at once they are And after that, he heard from Narayan to the glory of men. And then went to Harupa. And then there he was chanting Narayan, Narayan. And there when he began to again, Four same Narayana came to him and they told him, Now you are pure. You can come and see. So, first name was Namapa and same Narayana came. And so, now, come, you are good. And then, you went to Narayana. Today, our class is finished here. So, last chapter, Sutra Ketu Maharaja Kham, we have an announcement for the devotees here at this festival for those who are desiring to take Harinam and Diksha initiations from Shilgur Day. So, uh, first of all, there are going to be two days for these initiations. That means Saturday and Sunday. But Saturday, uh, there will also be a Harinam procession, which to tomorrow, that means tomorrow, Saturday, there will be a, a big Harinam procession going to a local place, which Shalil Guru Shodham Prabhu will explain in details about. But for the devotees who desire initiation, but they cannot stay through till Sunday, they have to leave early, only for those devotees that they can come tomorrow morning and receive initiation from Shiva Gurudev. The, and those who can stay till Sunday or beyond that day, they should come only on Sunday for 